Yay, I think I'm live. Hello everybody. Uh, my name is John Taylor and I'm an animator and I also do um, animation tutorial videos. And it has been, I think, over two years since my last video, so I'm excited to be back. And this time I'm doing it live, which is extremely exciting. So thank you for joining in. If you're watching this live, you're very welcome. If you're watching this pre-recorded, then I hope this tutorial is going to be really, really useful. Um, today I thought I'd kind of get back into the swing of things with a more simple uh, tutorial. So what I plan to do today is to show you how to rig a simple character in the timeline. Uh, this is one of my most wanted tutorials um, or, or kind of requested tutorials over the last few years. So um, I thought I'd start with a simple one. Um, so I've kind of got going with this little character here which I've created this morning ready for this tutorial. Let's get my board up before I forget. Okay, so I've called this guy Frank. I suppose it's a bit like, uh, maybe say a posh superhero or posh super spy or something. But I've done him in, in front view, so let me just show you what I've done to get going. So I first of all started with a new layer and I did a quick sketch, which I'll show you. It's just down here. So I just sketched him out very quickly just to kind of give myself a guide. I then drew the lines on top on a second layer, which is this one down here. Um, and then to save time, what I've done is I've already chopped up the character. So you'll see all the layers under, above here, look, at the, in, the, in the left hand corner, are all the different layers of the character. So I really wanted this video to be about rigging um, and rather than all the other stuff, and that takes quite a while. So I thought I'd chop that bit out for us and um, just focus on, on the rigging side of things. So if I turn everything back on and turn those two off and go back to my camera view, you'll see it's a bit of a mess. So the plan for this video, which hopefully will be about half an hour, an hour or so, I plan to um, rig him up and make him look really good by the time this video is finished. And maybe next week I might animate him, we'll, but we'll see how we go. So let me just skip across here for a second. And hello to everyone who's doing comments. I'm, first of all, I'm really sorry if I'm really bad at this. I've not done this for two years. So please, please, please give me a bit of um, time to get used to it again. I've got comments over here, all sorts going on. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's going to be really good fun. So I'll leave it at that and we'll kind of crack on with the uh, tutorial and see how we get going. Okay, so let me just get this going again. I'm, I'm using two screens and it's all a bit confusing to me. I'm, I'll, I'll get the hang of it. Give me a few weeks to get back into it and I'll, it will soon be fine. I'll try and read your comments if I see them. Um, if I don't, please accept my apologies. I will, I will get better at it. Okay, so let me just go through all the layers. So like I said, I've, I've done the drawing and I've already pre-chopped him up into different sections. So if I just go through the drawings first, you'll see what I've done. So that's the, the main drawing layer. So I've now cut him down into the hair, which are the little dots on top of his head. I've given him a beard, which currently looks like a very weird shape, but bear with me. A mouth, eyelids, pupils, that's the, that's the sort of a left hand eye. The, uh, the eye line to the bit underneath the eye. I've got ears, eyebrow, the other ear, other eyebrow, other eyelid pupil eye. So lots and lots of bits for the head. And that's the head itself. Oh, and under that I've got the body. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Bow tie, hand, lower arm, upper arm, hand, lower arm, upper arm, foot. Where's that gone? There's the foot. There it is. And then lower leg, upper leg. I've put in little ankles as well. I'll tell you why later. So little ankles, and then the other foot and the other leg, and then finally at the bottom, we've got a few things still. We've got the neck, and then I've broken the nose into three sections. So first of all we have the nose, which looks like that, and I've also given it nostrils. And again, I'll show you why later. Um, I'm doing it in the timeline today rather than in the node view, because obviously quite a lot of you only have the basic version of Tarp Harmony rather than the premium version. I'm doing this in premium, um, I'm going to try my best to only do it in a way that you could do it in Essentials or Advanced. But if I do do a few things without you know, realising, please forgive me. 
because um, I've I haven't used essentials for years and years and years. But I'm going to try and do my best to do it uh, as you would do it in essentials to kind of show you what you can do with a rig. Because people can sometimes think that if we're, if you haven't got the node view, you can't rig really well. But you, actually, you can do it. It just takes a lot longer. Um, and I must admit, I do love the node view. I'm a, a node view evangelist. It's so so good. Um, okay, so the first thing I do is after cutting it all up is to reorder it in the timeline. So when you come to it, the top of the timeline is the thing closest to the camera, and the bottom of the timeline is the thing furthest away from the camera. So you want to order it in a way that the things you want to see at the front are at the top, and the things that should be further back are at the bottom. And so let's go through and do that first. So right at the bottom here we've got the nose, so let's take that right up the top. So you should hold and drag and drop it, and the nose appears at the top of your character. So we'll go, we'll go through and get the nostrils. So number one is the screen left hand side, number two is the screen right hand side. And I always like to do number one in front of number two. Um, it depends on you know, the way you like to work. That way when you're rotating the head and that sort of thing you know that number one is always going to be in front and if you flip the head number one will still be in the front. So. Let's sort this out. So number two will go underneath that one. So now we see the nose is already starting to be in the right order. Um, hello. No, it's, I'm currently using uh, Harmony 15 still. Thanks for the question, by the way. Um, no, I'm using Harmony 15 still. I've not got my hands on 16 yet, but I would I will be downloading it soon. Um, I think it comes out today, so if you haven't got it, go and download 16. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing a video on the, the, all, all the new things that are going to be included in that soon. Um, so the neck comes up to the top. We'll put that underneath the head, which is there. Then I've got uh, so upper leg and lower leg. So we'll keep the low. I'm for this rig. I normally I put the lower leg underneath the upper leg. But I'm, for this rig, it would be more basic. I want to put the lower leg on top of the upper leg, uh, with the foot being at, underneath and the ankle for that one being underneath the legs and underneath the foot. Uh, let's do underneath the foot for now. So we'll do the same order here for, for leg number one. Again, leg number one being on top of leg number two. So then we're into the arms. So if I zoom out, you'll see what I'm selecting. Uh, so upper arm with the lower arm on top again and the hand underneath the lower arm. So the same for that arm, and again, hand and arm number one being on top of number uh, of the upper arm. There we go, and then the bow tie, which you can't see because currently we've got the, neck, uh, the beard in the way, um, is here. So that needs to be higher up, so we're going to bring that in front of the body and the neck. Actually, maybe even the head, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that later. And let's turn the beard back on. And now we're into the complicated setup of the head because there's so many pieces of the head, it can get very, very confusing. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please ask and I will try my best to answer them as we go. So let's have a look. Where are we? Oh, the head. So we've got the eye first, which is then has the pupil on top of it and the eyelid on top of it as well. Uh, and then the eyebrow on top of that. So that's the first one. I'm going to put the ear behind that. So another question, did you start in Flash and make a switch to Toon Boom? Um, not really. I first found Toon Boom in 2002 when I was at university. Uh, and I was using Flash back then. My first couple of films at university were made in Flash. Um, but uh, I soon found YouTube, shipped it, shipped it over from Canada and I've been using it ever since then, which must have been about 2002, and I've never gone back to anything else. I've always been solely on Toon Boom ever since. Um, I, hope, so I hope that helps. So, where were we? So the eye one is done. So all of this needs to come above the second eye. So let's bring it up here. And then we've got eye line one, which will stick under there. So, where's eye two? Eye two. Eye number two, there we go. So eye line number two, eye pupil two, eyelid, whoops, eye line number one. 
Okay, so that's all, all okay. I'm just checking it's all right. The mouth should be above the beard. You haven't got the motivation to start animating. Any tips? Wait till you've got it. I, that's why I've been away for two years because I got burnt out and a bit worn out by it all. I lost my passion. I'm back because I waited for to have that um, that, that desire to animate again. And now I'm doing it again. I'm loving it. So yeah, if you're not motivated, just keep enjoying what you do and wait for it to come back. Only do what you're passionate about. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. That's my opinion. Um, that's my ten pence worth. Uh, so mouth, and then we've got the hair at the top, and the nose on top there. Let's just work our way through down the timeline to kind of make sure we're in the right place. So nose, nostril one, nostril two, hair, mouth, beard, eyebrow one, eyelid, pupil, eye, eye line. Let's see if you can see a bit more as well. Then we need. So we're going to eyelid two, so we need the eyebrow to come up here. Whoops, not there. Eyebrow, eyelid, pupil, eye, eye line, the second ear and the first ear, number one above, and the head, bow tie, neck, body. Lower arm and upper arm. Low arm, hand, upper arm, and then we're onto the legs. So lower leg, upper leg, foot, ankle, lower leg, upper leg, foot, ankle. Okay, so that's now the first stage. So we know now that everything is roughly in the right order in the character. Sorry, I'm trying to read the comments and I'm getting distracted, so I'm sorry. But thank you for the comments, I really appreciate them. I'm trying to focus on this at the same time. Ah, so it's all so new. Um, it's been so long, but it's so good to be back. Uh, okay, so the next thing to do is um, we're going to add pegs to every single layer. So to do that, you just simply click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and then click on the pegs. And that will give a peg to every single layer. And then we'll close all those because we won't really need to see the drawing layers at all now. So let's close those. There must be a way of closing that quicker than the way I'm doing it. That seems really slow when you've got like 30 layers. Oh man, that's a bit dull, isn't it? It's got to be a way of opening and closing all or something. If you know that, if there's a way to open and close all the layers that I've forgotten about, then please let me know. Even though I've been doing this for I don't know how long, I still don't know everything, so please feel free to share your wisdom with me. Um, so now we've got every drawing layer with a peg. Um, I've done a tutorial about this before, but I, I set up my Toon Boom where all the, the peg controls um, on the drawings go to the peg layer and not on the drawing layer. So if I don't have a peg, I can't move the drawing layers with the transform tool. That way, all of the transitions, uh, all of the transform details go to the peg rather than the drawing layer. Um, but there's a previous video about that, and I'll let you go and find that rather than trying to explain it now. That's a good question. Why did you make the character bigger than the grid field? Um, I ignore the grid field completely. That's that's the honest answer. So the grid, if you don't know what it is, is um, oh, is it on here? So I never use it. Yes, yeah, show grid. There we go, so that's the grid there, um, which is the classic kind of scaling for, for when you used to do animation on paper, basically. Um, I never use it, never have. I basically find a pen, find the size of pen that I like, and then draw with that pen, and then I create backgrounds to match the size of the character. Um, that's basically how I do it. I've never worked with that before. So um, that's, that's why I never use the grid. I basically just draw with the whatever size pen that I feel works well for the character and then build backgrounds and other things to match the character. Um, so I hope that helps. So what we're going to do now is I think we're going to start by building the head, because that's the most complicated thing. Um, so obviously, for example, if I want to move the nose, if I want to move the head, the whole head, at the moment, I can't do that, because if I select the peg for the head, 
it just moves the head. So we want to build a rig where we can select the individual odd parts separately, but also where we can move the whole thing together at the same time. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is find the head layer and then create another peg. And this one, which I hope you can see this, I'm going to call head master peg. Again, I'm doing this all in the timeline, not in the node view. I'm being a very good boy because it's so tempting to skip over to the node view. I'm going to be a good boy. Um, so now I'm going to take everything that goes in the head and drop all of that inside that master peg. So now, if I move this, the whole thing comes with me. I still need to do a lot of work with that, but at least we know now that if I move the head in total, the whole features of the face will come with us. And then what I'm going to do now is work on the eyes. So again, what I want to do is create a master for the eye. And so I'm going to do a new peg. There's this little symbol here with the little line with the white dot on it and a plus. And I'm going to call that again master, just so we know exactly which one we're playing with. And I'm going to take everything for the eye, and the eye that goes in there, and the eye line. And I'll hopefully explain why I've separated out everything in so much detail for you later. Let's just do the rig first. So now again, if you see, if we come in, we can select each item individually, but we can also select the eye in total. So that's what you want for now. So we're going to do kind of a basic, I do kind of different levels of rigs. So I start off with the basic rig and then go into more detail later as we try and work out how the animation is going to work. Um, so I'll do that again with this eye. So create a new one change the name to master. Again, this is only what I do. You haven't got to do any of this, and that's the good thing about Toon Boom, it's so flexible, you can do whatever works for you. So you might find ways of doing this that work better for you. Um, but it's just the way I've done it over the years from watching many videos myself and being on different courses and this sort of thing. And I've, I've changed the way I do it to fit the way I like to animate. So just feel free to go with whatever works for you. So again, hopefully now, we can still select the different objects. Let's have a look at that. There's a bit of a drawing mistake there somewhere. Somewhere there's a bit of something extra. There we go. And then we should also be able to go up and pick the whole eye up, which is really good. Okay, so that's that bit done. I'm also going to do one for the nose, because even though the nose is in three parts, we want to be able to move the whole nose at the same time. So I'm going to do that as well. So anything that's broken down into sections, always do a, a master peg. Can you hear me okay and see me okay? Because I, I don't know what I look like on the screen. So And I'm using my computer microphone. So if it's not very good, please do let me know and I'll do my best to change that for next live video. So now again, we can, whoa, we lost something there. Where's he gone? Loud and clear, that's, that's good to hear, that's good to hear. Hang on, I've made a mistake there, something's not working. Why, where's my nose gone? Oh, I see. Okay, right. So let's just do that again. Sorry. Focus, John. Focus on what you're doing. Okay, so we can now get the nostrils and the nose and hopefully the whole nose. Like so. So that's that. A bit of my tea from this. My favourite mug, Muppets. Whee! Right, thank you for your feedback. That's really good to know. So where are we now? So nose, eye, the hair will be by itself, so that's okay. And we've got the ears somewhere, haven't we, as well? Ears are here, and the head. Okay. I'm going to try and show you how to use a cutter for the beard. That's why the beard's looking really weird at the moment, because the idea is that obviously it'll be cut into his face. And in the node view, with the premium version, it's really, really simple to put a a cutter on, but you still can do it in the timeline. I'm going to hopefully show you how to do that and get it to work for you. It's a bit more 
it's a lot more hard work to do it than it is with the node view, but we can do it and it looks really good. And you can apply that to the whole face, so you can move the whole face and it will cut as you move it around, which is really, really helpful for, um, for, for sort of a really simple animation, but it looks really good. Okay, so I think that's the head done, so let's just check. So if we go up the hierarchy, so I'm pressing B here, so you select what you want, you go up to select the peg and B again to go up the hierarchy. So you can see it on the timeline jumping. So if I start on the head layer, you'll see it's selected that. It's so now it's got the peg. I press B again, it jumps up to the next peg, which is the, the whole head. And the moment the pivot point is wrong, but I'll give you a rough idea, but you can move the whole head. So we can just check that. So if we go to the lowest thing, go up the hierarchy, that's good. Like so, and his eyelids there, eyebrow. Okay, so I think the head is pretty much there. We'll do a proper test when we get there. We're going to go through it a couple of times and make sure it's right. So the body itself doesn't really have anything. Again, if I was doing this 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 particular character in the premium version, which obviously is what I've got, um, I'd be using deformers here on the body, uh, but we haven't got those because we're using essential. Um, so I can't do those. Oh, um, but we'll go to the arms. So arms are quite simple again. What I like to do is when you move the upper arm, you want the lower arm and the hand to come with you. So I'm going to drop those two into the upper arm. So if we open it up again, we've now got the two. So if I just temporarily move this pivot, select this one, now all of it will, will, will move with us. And in the same way, when I move the lower arm, I want the hand to come with me, because at the moment, the hand won't, because it's on a separate thing. So what I want it to do is to come with me. So I'm going to drop the hand, literally drag and drop that into the lower arm, like that. So now, if we work up the hierarchy, we've got the hand. So the hand can move by itself. The lower arm, which also controls the hand and then the upper arm. And we'll come to the order and stuff later, we'll sort that out later. Um, but that works for now. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's do this arm. So upper arm, drop those two in there. And then the hand will go into the lower arm. I was I'm just moving the order around a little bit. So the hand is now under the lower arm. The same with here. We'll go to the go into the lower arm and just drag the lower arm above the hand, so that it cuts that off. Okay, so let's just check that hand again. Hey Garish, hey Garish, I haven't seen you for a while. Um, so I've got a hand goes up to the lower arm and up to the upper arm. So that's the hand done, and the legs work in exactly the same way. So we're going to find the upper leg, drop the lower leg in and the foot in, and then we're going to drop the foot into the lower leg, and then make sure that the foot is below the uh, lower leg, like that. Okay, so let's try that again. So we've got up the hierarchy, so we've got the foot, the lower leg and the foot, and then the upper leg and the rest of the leg as well, and the foot, so that's good. So we'll close that up. Oh, I've got the ankle as well, let's stick the ankle in. So the ankle will go in the inside that one, let's stick it in there for now. Where's it gone? Here. Into the lower leg, and above the foot. No, under the foot. There we go. So if I move it out the way a second, you'll see the ankle is just poking out underneath. So that's what we want. So then the last leg. So we're going to drop that one in. Drop these two in. Then we're going to want the ankle and the foot to go in the lower leg. If I'm going too fast, please let me know and I will uh, slow down a bit. If you've got version 12 of premium, that works fine. I've still got version 12. I'll say I'm not using it anymore, but you can do most of the things you can do in 15 or 16 as it is today in uh, version 12. 
one one thing though is if you are using an older version, once you save it in a newer version, you can't go back. So just make sure that you finish a project in the version you're using, otherwise you might get a bit stuck and have to redo bits, which is a bit rubbish. Um, okay, so let's do that again. So we've got the ankle is above the foot here, so let's just do that. So we need the lower leg to be above those two, like that. Okay, so let's just double check that. Okay. Is it all clear so far? Please let me know if not, and I will go back and, and address it for you. But I think the rough order there is good. What I'm going to do now is just to make it another level of hierarchy. Is I'm going to make a master peg for our character. Because again, at the moment, if I want to animate, I can move the arm or the head, but I can't move the whole character as one. So I'm going to go to the top and just add a peg and then just change this. And I'm going to make it all capitals, just so I know it's nice and clear. I mean, I mean, you can colour the different layers if you want to. That, that helps you. Uh, where are we? There we go. So now we've got a master peg. And I'm going to drop all of those into there and bring the head to the top, like so. So now I can select the whole character as well, and I can still select all the different bits that I want to move when I want to move them. So, I'll give a couple of seconds for any questions that are coming in, and then I will crack on with the next bit. I'm quite enjoying this. This is good fun. Really good fun. I'm working in, I used to work in my parents' uh, back, sort of back office room. They had an office that was they weren't using, so I used to work in there. But I've since moved back home again. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I'm literally working in the corner of my bedroom. So it's a bit cramped. I've got a, two screens going. My bed is literally behind my chair. I've got a drawing board because I'm working on a chest of drawers. So it's particularly tight, but it's good fun and it's, it's cosy, which is nice. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good fun. Hopefully one day I might have a bit more space again, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, okay, so where were we? So what I'm going to do now is we're going to have some fun, shall we? I think we'll do, should we do pivot, pivot points first? So... A pivot point is obviously the point that a drawing pivots from or moves from. It kind of goes around in circles. So if I take this, the head layer, for example, at the moment, you'll see if I select that peg, the pivot is this blue dot. And obviously at the moment, it's moving from the wrong place. We don't want it to move from there. We want it to move from the top of that neck, really. So what you do is you select your transform tool and then your rotate tool, and you'll see the circle highlight around it. If you drag that point now to where you want it to be and let go, if you click on the transform tool again, it's permanently moved the pivot to that point. If, for example, you use the transform tool rather than the rotate tool, so if I did it like this on a move, that would only move it temporarily while you're selecting it and not permanently. Excuse me. So to move it permanently, you have to use the rotate tool. And now if we rotate it, you'll see that it's got a much better place to rotate from. Once the beard has been got rid of and properly cut in, it'll, 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 it'll look a lot better. So the thing to do now, literally, it's really, really boring, unfortunately, but you have to literally go through every single layer and set the pivot point, because the pivot point is always naturally in the middle of the camera view. So you literally have to go on there, select the transform tool, select another piece, go to, go to that, Zoom in, put it in the middle of your piece, or wherever you want it to rotate from, and go to the next one, and carry on going. And this is why it takes a long time to do this. And people do question me, saying, well, what, why do you do all this making a rig when you can just draw it? But actually, when it comes down to it, it's actually a lot faster to animate. Because once you spend the time to build the rig and get the rig right, you can animate extremely quickly unlike kind of more traditional animation when you're drawing all the time, um, you can you can actually animate it really quickly once it's all set up. Particularly if you've got multiple hands and mouths and different head shapes or body shapes or whatever, you can literally animate a character doing quite complex animation in, in, in a few hours, and it's really, really straightforward. Thank you for all the love that you're sharing. I really appreciate it. Really good to see that I, my, my videos have made some sort of difference to people, so <laughs> it's always encouraging. So thank you for that, I really appreciate it. 
I've always loved sharing what I know. I'm by no means an expert at this stuff, but I've always really, really loved sharing what I have learned with people. So it's a joy that you're here with me, and uh, hopefully there'll be more things to come. Yeah, so I am, thanks for that, that is good. Yeah, I'm doing puppet animation, basically. Um, so unlike traditional 2D animation where you draw frame by frame, this is what's called puppet animation. So you basically are creating a 2D puppet in Toon Boom, which you can then manipulate um, to do what you want. And you can obviously do these templated rigs. Um, or what you can do is you can create a template animation, so you can take your rig and then save a walk cycle, for example, um, or you could do a jump or something. And you, if you're going to use that over and over and over again in your in your series or your short film, you can make um, templated animation, and then you can drag and drop it onto your character, and you, literally you've got pre-made pre-made animation set for you, which is really good. So yeah, so basically is what you call puppet animation. So yeah, unfortunately, this is the really dull bit. So please bear with me while I while I do this. This is really funny because my thing here is telling me that I've got nobody watching me. But you clearly are watching me because you're leaving me, me me messages. So that really doesn't make any sense to me. I must get my head around this whole YouTube thing. <laughs> Thanks for the comments. Yes, um, lots and lots of. I mean, Toon Boom has now become pretty much the industry standard for most TV 2D animation. Simpsons, Family Guy. I think Bob Burgers is made in in Toon Boom. Quite a lot of the studios in the UK that do children's animation are moving over to Toon Boom. Um, Disney used it for The Princess and the Frog, and they're using it for other other films. Um, so it really is becoming the industry standard. So if you can, if you're learning it, keep going because it's where the jobs are going to be coming into the future. So, um, and I've been doing it, using it for a long, long time, but it's really, particularly in the UK now, it's become um, very, very popular. So, see, I, having to learn to talk and work at the same time while actually knowing what you're doing, because I've forgotten what, what bits I've done. <laughs> oh dear. So much to learn, so much to learn. I must admit, it's so nice doing it live rather than doing it recorded. It actually feels like I'm actually with people. Because that was one of the issues I talked about motivation earlier. Um, that's one of the reasons I stopped for, because I was actually really lonely. I'd, I've been doing this for like eight years by myself in a room. And I was just so lonely because I didn't really see anybody apart from my family in the evenings, um, which obviously I love. Um, but it was really taking its toll a bit, really, because... You know, I'm a real peopley person. I like to be with people, and I'm really struggling to to animate for so many hours in a row uh, by myself. Okay, so we've done the main bits of the body now, but the arms are slightly different because obviously the arms are crucial. You get you get the pivots in the right place, otherwise it will screw up the whole the whole arm. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect these or deactivate them by pressing D, just so we can see the arms for a second. Okay, so what we're going to do is. I've um, already got to clean these up and put circles in the in the joints and put a pivot point marker so I know exactly where I want them to be. So on this one, I'm going to do that and I'm going to drag that pivot point exactly into them, essential into that dot as I possibly can. And the same with the lower arm, I'm going to drag that down there and make it as central as I possibly can. Um, and the hand. If you would like this rig after I've finished with it, I'm very happy to give it to you. Please just let me know if you'd like a copy of it and I'll try and find some way of getting it to you. I might just do a link to a kind of Google Drive file or something and you share it on the video. But I'm not precious about this character. I've only done him, I've drawn him this morning, so if you would like him to practice on, you're very, very welcome to. It says 13 watching. Yay, well hello 13 of you. That is, that's awesome. I'm so pleased that 13 people has taken that time out of their day to come and see me. 
I have no idea why my thing is saying zero four. That's very strange. But anyway. Okay, I will definitely make it available for you then. So where are we in this hand? We're almost there, we're not far away. And then we'll test the rig again and make check any errors. So same with the legs, we're gonna I've done the points already. If you want to know how I've done all this, I've done videos in my minion series as well about how to um, create these points and stuff. So rather than doing it all again, um, I'll just focus on the rigging. And we're almost onto the exciting part of trying to create a manual cutter, which is awkward but quite satisfying when you actually manage to do it. So that will be good. Let's get these last few done. We're almost there. So this character was drawn with the pen tool. Normally I prefer to draw with the brush and kind of make a much more sort of natural look to it. But I thought I would experiment a little bit myself. Well, come on, John, focus on what you're doing. That's the one. Um, and I, so I thought I'd use the pen tool this time. And I, I was quite pleased with my character. He took me about an hour to draw and to split up and tidy up and stuff. So an hour from nothing to a character ready to rig, I thought was pretty, pretty good. And obviously this is only a single view character. If I was doing a full rig, I might do the character in four or five different positions, sort of front, back, three quarters, and then profile and stuff. Um, but I'm only doing the one, just to kind of give you a heads up. Um, if you did want to do more views to this character, you go to the second frame and just draw the, that view that you want, and then split him up into the layers that, you, that you've already created. But again, I've done a video about that um, with the rigging a 3D thing, so go and check that out. It was my last video before I stopped last time. So do go and have a look. Uh, right foot. So I th the foot will have to kind of work. I'll put it here for now in the middle, but as we test it, we might have to go back and just change that because it, it depends on how it looks uh, and I always find you need to kind of get a rig, rig it up, animate it a little bit as a test and then go back and make changes because there's always things that don't really work very well that you can't really tell until um, you've actually animated with it so we'll put it there for now and just see how we go. Here's a little ankle, little Michael Jackson socks. Oh, the Batman series. Yes, that was very good. I, I did enjoy that. Uh, that was a good. I, I was watching my videos back the other day, obviously because it's been so long since I've done one, and it was that was it was really good. I did enjoy that. That was a good little series. Right. Okay. So I think I think we're done. So let's just turn him all off and turn him back on again. Get rid of the sketch and the thing line. Okay. So this is where we find out I've got it horribly wrong. Um, <laughs> hopefully not. So we'll do a few tests. So hand is moving from the right place. Go up the hierarchy. Obviously it's going behind the body at the moment, but we'll sort that out later. Um, so that's looking like it's moving nicely. And you see by doing those circles, I've got an exact pivot point. So it goes within the same circle on both the upper and the lower arm. So it matches really nicely. And going up to the upper arm, Oh, hang on, let's just get rid of that keyframe before we get confused. That goes around and works nicely as well. So that one's okay. That one's sorted. Again, that one's alright. That one's okay. That one's okay. Let's do the foot. So let's have a look at this foot. Is that going to work down there? So I've got the sock there, and just so that if we did tilt it, you see, you've got a little bit of something rather than sort of like it's floating off his body. So I think actually the middle might be okay. So we'll give that a go. We'll try it. Lower leg, again, yeah, looks like a good joint. And the upper leg. Again, this is something, like this bit here looks a bit weird, but we, when you're animated, you, you can move the leg like this, for example, so it doesn't stick out like that, unless you're happy with that look. So, that one's alright. 
I'm always surprised that when people ask for a quote for Anna, oh hello, hang on one second, that ankle's not attached to the lower leg. Let's have a look at that. See? Always check your rigs. So ankle, lower leg. You should be in there. And you should be below everything. There. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, I'm always surprised when people ask for a quote for animation, um, how little they want to spend on it. And when you, when you see just how long these things take, and this is just one character. I mean, if I was going to do a full rig, it would probably take me about at least a day. And that's for a basic character. Uh, maybe even two days, depending on how advanced it is. So, yeah, people come in and ask you to dock a five-minute animation for £500. And you think, I can't, I can't do that for that price. That's just not going to happen. People don't seem to understand just how long animation takes. Even though this is a very quick form of animation, it still takes an incredible amount of time. So I'm always surprised at the people's sort of perception of how quickly you know you can do really good quality stuff. Um, so let's have a look. So, the, so this is the master peg. So with the master peg, again, personal preference, I always put it at the lowest point of the character. Um, again, you might want to put it somewhere else. That's not anything to I just, from experience, prefer to do that. So this way, if you did want to stretch your character, or for whatever reason, like say you're doing an expression like, ah, oh, surprise or something, you can do it from the base and his feet don't move too much. Um, again, sometimes though, it is handy having it sort of on his belly button area. Um, but again, it's personal preference. So you do what you feel um, it works for you. Thank you, Fazwa. Thank you for coming and, uh, and enjoy your afternoon of work. Okay, so let's just double check. Headmaster, have you done that? Have you, have you, done, have you finished all the head? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the neck, that needs to be done. So let's just turn the head off for a second. And we will put the neck in. So I'll put the neck just on the shoulders. Also, you might realise that actually what we do need to do is to connect the head to the neck, because if the neck moves, the head moves. So actually the headmaster has got to go into the neck, like so. So if we turn that back on again, and we move the neck peg, the head will move, but also you can move the head separately as well. So that's the head which is separate from the neck. We must sort that beard out, but that looks ridiculous. Um, it's one of those... Uh, yeah, let's just do that. I'm, I was going to make sure I'm up to date before I... Let's just save it, because my computer does crash sometimes, so we'll do that. Now, I've got plenty of drinks to make sure that I'm hydrated while we're doing this. How are we doing? It's quarter two already. Oh man, it's taking 45 minutes to get this far. See, it takes ages to do this stuff. Um, okay, so I think the basic rig then is pretty much there. Uh, one thing as well is, of course, is if you want to move the body, you would you would expect the rest of the body to come with it. So what I might do here is, rather than connecting everything to that particular peg, is to create a body master peg. Because again, you may want to in your animation, for example, if you're is make him smaller or fatter depending on if you're turning his body so you want to be able to control that separately um, but again what and there's different ways of doing it you, you know you can do this sort of rig or you can literally leave every piece uh, separate and you can move every piece individually some animators actually prefer that they have one master peg and then every layer on us with a separate peg not attached and then that's so they can fl the kind of maximum flexibility to kind of move their character around and animate him. Um, but it, it depends on what you want to do, really. Um, so we've got the master peg, so we're going to stick in the neck, which I think includes the head, the bow tie, they can both go in, and then we're going to put the two arms in there, and we'll put them below the body. Hello! Thanks for the comments. Okay, so let's have a look. So if we go like that now, that's the body peg. Then we've got the master body peg, which we'll set a peg, a, pivot, a pivot for. 
So again, we'll put that right down on his crotch. And then we can move the whole thing. Ah, oh, see, I've, I'm not sure I could do it without deformers now, because I'm so used to using deformers. It adds, it's so quick to do our animation. It's more bouncy and lovely. It's really hard to do it without that. Um, so let's just do a quick test again. Let's just bring this down a bit so we can see. So going up the hierarchy, up the leg, upper leg, master peg, up the leg, master peg, body to body peg, to upper body or master body peg, and then the full peg. And then it's the arm. The bow tie should just go to the master, which it does, or to the, or the upper body master. Yeah, let's change that, shall we? Let's make that upper body master, because that will be a bit easier to... I'll just put a U for that. The upper body master. And then we've got the rest of it here. Okay. Oh, have we actually managed to do it in under an hour? Oh, that, that pivot's all wrong, so let's just do that pivot. So this is the whole eye, so we'll just, just check these pivots one more time. That one's okay, that one's wrong. Yeah, so what I plan to do is that it's the same time next week, I plan to maybe do a little animation with him for you, just to kind of show you um, how you go about animating him. Obviously, like I said, he's a very basic character, but I'll maybe do a little head turn, and maybe a little jump or something, just to sort of show you how you go about it. Um, but we'll, we'll do that when we get there next week. So tune in next week for that. So eyebrows. So I've watched quite a lot of people streaming before, and when you actually do it yourself, you realise just how good they are at it and just how natural they are at it, because it's actually a lot harder than you think it's going to be. Yes, they did. Uh, they have, they've released Harmony 16 today, and I'm going to go and check that out after this video, I think. Um, a few more pivots just to correct. And then we're on to the cutter, pretty much. Yeah, I will do a video on Harmony 16. Actually, even on Harmony 15, because I've not used like the, the, like the master peg controller at all yet. So I, I really want to dive into some of those things because I've been away for two years, haven't touched it for two years, um, and, and, until a month ago. So there's lots of stuff in this version I've not looked at yet. So I will definitely be diving into the new features in 15 and 16 at some point very soon. So I'll get, I'll crack on with that. Okay, so I think we're done. We can always come back and change anything if it's not working. A bit later, we aren't definitely at the final rig stage where you pop it into your library for uh, use in, in some sort of animation. So I think it's all good. The mouth, yeah, that looks okay. The beard is done. Okay, so it's a little save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this cutter. Now, if you're using the node view, this takes about two minutes, if that. It's so so quick. Um, but I'm going to be a good boy and I'm going to do it in the timeline. Apart from the fact that I can't actually add it to the timeline without the node view, because I've got premium, because I was doing a little test earlier. So if you're using Essentials or Advanced, down here on the plus, you've, there should be like a little option where you can add an effect or something, and one of them will be a cutter, but I don't have that because I use the node view. So I'm going to have to be a bit of a cheat and add it in the node view, but I'll do that in a second. So first of all, let's find the beard, and if you go to the little magnifying glass, uh, with the blue line through it, click on that, it highlights, it sort of centers on selection is the actual official term, and finds the beard. So I'm just going to pop to the node view just very quickly, and then all of you go, oh, what is that horrible mess? It's just a dream to work with. Um, so yeah, let's find the beard, which highlights over here. I'm just going to very going to quickly attach the, the cutter because I can't do it in this version in the thing, but you can do it, you can do this in the basic version. So I'm just going to add that in. Okay. I'm 
glad to hear that you think I'm doing a good job of streaming because, like I said, it's the first time I've streamed live in I don't know how long. So appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, is it getting dark in here or am I okay? I'm feeling a bit dark. Um, let me know if I need to open the curtain a bit more. Um, okay, so if we, let's go back to the timeline. So if you've gone on, you've selected your beard, you've gone to the plus symbol and added a cutter. If you look underneath your beard, you'll see the cutter is now underneath the drawing layer. Um, so what we want to do is, if we click on the plus symbol on the cutter, you'll see the mapped drop layer here. So what it's asking for is, um, what layer do you want to use as a cutter, like a mask? And at the moment, we don't really have one. Um, because in the node view, you just drag another line out from your node and attach it, but we can't do that. So the way around it that I've kind of found is, is to find the head, open up the head and duplicate the head layer. So we're going to duplicate selected layers and I'm going to name this mat. So Frank head mat. Let's go to the drawing for that a second. So that is the map that we want it to cut. And what I want to do is take that out of there for now, just so I know where it is. And I'm going to open up the beard, find the cutter, and I'm going to drag the Frank head mat into the drop layer here bit under the cutter. And what you'll see is that it's cut the beard this way around, and I said that's wrong. We want the beard to be the bit inside of it. So you just double click on the cutter and click on the inverted button, and it then cuts the beard. And Actually, I quite like the fact that the beard has no outline. That is, I think it's quite funky, but I'm going to add it back in just so you can see how to do it. Um, and if you think, well, why have you done that? Why bother going to all the effort to do that? Um, and the thing is, when you're doing a head turn, what you want is the, the ability to be able to move the beard. So what we can do is we can put everything through that mat, the same mat. So we can move the nose and the eyes towards the left or the right, and it will be a little bit like he's turning his head. And then what you do is you flip to the, the side view or the three-quarter view, once you've got to a certain point of your head turn. Um, but this way, we can add all of the facial features here and drag them, and they'll be cut naturally by the side of the face, uh, which I think is just awesome. Um, so, again, at the moment, for example, if I take the mouth, if I did it with the mouth, it doesn't cut. But I can do exactly the same thing with the mouth and the nose and the eyes and stuff, and that way it will um, cut as you turn the head, which I think is just really awesome. Um, so what do you think? Do you, do you prefer the beard with the line or without the line? So I actually quite like it without the line. I think, I think it's quite funky. What do you think? Let, let, let me know in the comments and I will um, do it. But I'll, sh I'll show you anyway because it's quite good to know in case you want to add the line back in. Um, so obviously we're using the mat as the cutter. So it's, it kind of, even though the mat is there, you don't see it on the screen because it's, it's being used as the cutter. Um, and the head is down here, which is obviously below the beard. So if we want to have the line back up here again, in, a, in the basic version of Toon we need to create another layer, as far as I'm aware anyway, um, with just the liner. I mean, I mean, you could make a symbol and then bring the liner forward in space so that it sits in front of everything. Um, that's another way around it. Um, again, but I think what we'll do is I'll just do the same again. So I'll duplicate the head layer, drag this one, up here, let's just do it where the mat is for now, and I'm going to put head line. Again, if you know a better way around this, then please do let me know. Okay, and I'm going to just go into the drawing layer, and I'm going to get rid of that colour. All we want is the line. And we go back on, and now the line is back. So now I can get the beard, select it, and move it and it will move within the face, um, and the line of the face still stays there. We'd need to just double check how these would work. We don't want these to move, so what would they be within? They're within the head master, excuse me. Um, so that should be okay, we wouldn't ever need them to move. If the head's moving, those things can stay there. We don't want to be able to move them. So I'm not happy with that, that's not looking good particularly. I think we're going to move that down to here. That's better. 
So some of your questions, I'll just say that, without but line of face like mouth now. Okay, can you remove the top outline in the beard? It looks good, but no outline. Okay, well let's try that. And well, let's just turn that line off for a second. And then the beard literally is the drawing. So I can come into here and just remove the outline. So what do you reckon? So black line around the beard, black line around both. Uh, I'm not sure I like that without some black line, either over the top of the beard or around the chin. What do you reckon? It's over to you. I either think with the top of the line or the whole thing, I think. I'm not sure I'd like it without no line around the beard. Mm. Let's turn it back for now. And I'll wait to have your feedback. How about... So you... Fire up germs. How about with outline on the chin? Oh, I see. Right, okay. So you're saying have the line, but then nothing on the beard. Let's have a look. Let's give that a try. Something like that. So the whole outline, but no outline on the beard. That looks quite cool as well. Maybe it loses a little bit of definition, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so it was save. So I think we're kind of we're almost there. I think in this view, we've got to do the arms and the uh, and the patching and that sort of thing. Mm. Um. Maybe a darker shade. Okay, and this is the wonderful thing about Toon Beam, you see, is I can come over to here's my palettes, click on the beard colour, and change it straight away, like within seconds. That was pretty cool. I quite like that. That's a bit better, isn't it? What do you reckon to that? A slightly darker beard. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that, that's good. Okay, so what we can do also, if I just show you how to do this as well. Now, can I cut a group? That, that's the thing. So actually, I'm, not, I'm so unused to using the timeline. It's very difficult. I'm going to try and cut the whole group of the eye. Let's see if we can do that, shall we? So I'm going to just go back in here again and add another cutter, because I can't do it here. Yeah. Okay, we'll stick with that then. Thanks for your comments and your feedback. We'll stick with that. Um, right, so no. Uh, oh, it's so much harder in this version. I wish I'd have done some more tests before doing this. So the eye master, so that's all going to come into. See, I'd use a. Ah, oh, so that manoeuvre is very difficult. I, I think I must do every single one. Individually, oh. Anyway, <laughs> well, how about we do the pupils? Because we could do that. So the pupil obviously comes out of the eye, and we want the same thing. So let's let's do the pupil as well. So, I'm gonna go to the nave view, add my cutter to the pupil, which is over here. Like so. If I come in this way. Oh, I need to add the thing, don't I? So we're going to go to the eye. Duplicate the eye. Make that our mat. And then go to the cutter, which is in the pupil. Open that up, and then we're going to do drag that into there, and then we're going to invert it. <laughs> I 
the node view really, really isn't scary. I promise you. It looks, it looks it when you're first doing it, but it goes, it goes like, ah, there's so many things. What am I doing? But it's just ingenious. It really, it really is. It's so, so good. And I promise you, if you just persevere with it and ask questions, and I'll help you with it. It's so. It's, if, you, if you've got it, use it because it's just genius. Anyway, it's enough being an evangelist for Toon Boom for now. Um, but now we take the pupil and it, it cuts through the eye really quite nicely. So there we go. So we've got a nice cutting pupil. <laughs> I guess we'll do the same here. It's annoying that I can't add it on the timeline for you because that would be quite helpful having to, without having to go to the node view. But I can't, so I'm going to have to do it this way. Okay, so let's go back again. Let's go to our first eye. Open up the pupil so you can see the cutter. Go to the eye. Duplicate the eye. Call that Matt. And then in the cutter, we drag the mat to there. Open, double click on the little star, change it to inverted. And again, now our pupil should cut with the eye. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I see, because that's there above the thing. Right, let's just check that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ears and put them behind the head. Just so they, they are definitely behind the head then, even though you don't really see the difference. Just doing a little quick just a little check around just to make sure it's OK. OK. So for example, let's just do a little test for you, because you, you might be wondering why I broke the nose into, into certain pieces. So then let's say we're doing a head turn. What we can do is, you see, we can move the eyes along this way, and then with the nose, we can animate it coming this way. And this one, you can shrink down and make smaller. Um, oh, this is very rough, just a bit. That's the reason why you break the nose down, is so that you can actually animate it moving. So when you've got your profile view of the nose, you can match it up to that. Um, and it gives it, 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 the, the more options you have, the better flexibility you have, the more um, or better animation you can create. Is that all done? Uh, let's redo that. Right. Okay, so I think we're onto the arms now. So obviously if you wanted to, you could go through and do the same thing with the eyes. I'm not sure if, if I can do it in a group. Cut the whole group, for example, unless Yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I, I need to look into that and come back to you. But you could obviously use a cutter for every part of the eye or the face so that it goes through into the thing, but that would take a little while for me to do, and rather than boring you with that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll work it out, and then when I get the rig finished, I'll make it available to you. Hopefully, there'll be a uh, it will be sorted for you. And um, obviously, now we need to sort these arms and legs out because at the moment the joins um, are shows. So we need to get rid of those. So again, if you had premium, if you had the node view, you could just simply drop and drag an auto patch on, and it will do this automatically for you. Um, and there are an, a couple of ways we can do this. You can create a symbol. Um, which works really well, or you can just literally get rid of the black line manually, and that's the way I'm going to do it today. Um, so if you go into the drawing of the upper arm, or the lower arm, do I use, make use of the quick swap plugin for swapping of hands, etc.? No, I use the library view, which is over here. I literally just go through on the frame and select the frame that I want. It's super, super quick. I've never had a problem with that. It's always worked well for me. 
So I've never used the quick swap plugin. I've never actually even heard of the quick swap plugin, <laughs> if I'm honest. So uh, no, I've never used that. I just use the library view. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, and I might have to. Oh no, not a crash! No, not during live streaming. Ah! So how much did we lose? That is annoying. Oh no. <laughs> Let me load it up again. Yes, I know it, it, it quit. Thank you very much. See, my, my Mac I'm using is 11 years old, and even though it's really, really good, it's got a little bit tendency to, to crash on me. Oh no, what did we lose? Uh, we might we might be okay. Oh rubbish. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna go and do this arm, aren't we? I'll go back and fix whatever we've lost um, before I give you the rig. <coughs> <coughs> so as I was saying, I think what I might have to do with this is to convert it to the, uh, what's the brush art and then I can get rid of this a lot easier. So what we want to do is we want to try and get rid of the black line in a spike, in the, roughly in the centre of that circle. So I'm going to add another point on the brush line by holding down it's on Apple, it's Command. And I'm actually going to hold that one and drag it in until it disappears. Like so. And then we can get rid of that. Oh, that's annoying. Why, why is that doing that for? Hang on, I might have to change that a bit. Let's just get rid of this. Paint that again. Obviously, when you do a, when you fill in between a pencil line, um, it goes to the central point of the um, of the line. When you fill a drawing or a, a brush stroke, it goes to the to the inside line, and that's why the um, color art there was. Um, sticking out. So if I, if I do it again now, see the colour is within there. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. So let's just do a little test on that for you. So I need to do a little bit less. I need to do that again. Let's do a little bit less. Maybe I must do the. Uh, The symbol version would be a bit rubbish. No, it's still too much. Oh, I don't really like using symbols. There we go. So that's a really, really simple way of doing an auto patch. Well, it's not an auto patch, it's a, a cheat. But it means that you can have a nice crisp finish um, to that without losing, having to add any fancy things. And we can do that on each arm and leg. It's not perfect. I probably would use the symbols, to be honest. It makes it, make, it, makes it look a bit, a bit neater. But it's not bad. So we'll do the same on this one. So we have to take that out, select this and turn it into line art and flatten it. Refill it with the suit colour and then take out a chunk of that. That was really ugly. Come on, selection. What? Oh, did the wrong thing. Ooh. There we 
we go. So that's that arm done. And once you're happy with it, what I always like to do is turn that dot into the suit colour. So find a little pivot point. Don't get rid of the dot, just turn it into the colour of the suit. I think my computer is slowly dying, it's getting very slow. Might have to call it a day soon. So I hope this is still helpful, I hope you're still enjoying this. So I'm getting a little bit lost in my work now, which is not particularly great. But I hope it's still being useful. So there we go, so his arms now are all kind of patched and ready to go. Again, this is a very, very simple patch. There are better ways to do it. Uh, you, can, you can use symbols. Um, but this is a very, a very quick and easy way of doing it, to cover up those lines. So I will just quickly do the legs, and then I think we're almost finished for today. So let's just redo these again. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm trying to keep my eye on the um, comments while working. So, okay, so we have to do the same thing. We have to get rid of the colour. Um, so with the shoulders, I'll do this first and I'll come back to the shoulders, the shoulders in a minute. And that'll, that'll be, I'll actually show you rather than trying to talk through it. So, we'll, so this button over here is to convert pencil lines to brush lines and then I'll use the other one in the top right corner there to flatten that together. Um, has that actually worked? Yeah. And then we'll refill that with the suit again. Go to our contour editor and just nick a little bit of that off. And this is where the pivot points come in really, really are so important when it comes to um, doing legs and joints and stuff, because if you get it wrong, that's when it becomes really obvious. So let's just have a look. Got a, you know, we've got a little bit there I could try and sneak off. So what? Oh, I see that because... Hmm, that's a bit strange. Let's try and just alter that a little bit. Oh, okay, it's because the top is a brush, I think. So what we'll do is we will do the same there. We'll select that. The vector brushes, hopefully that might be enough. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is take another bit off of that, I think. So not, I, think, I think it was too high, so we'll, we'll come back and just nick it off down here. Let's try that and see if that looks a bit better. Got a random little line there, what's that about? There we go. It's a nice little crease in his trousers. So we'll do the same on this one. Must remember shoulders, must remember shoulders. Yeah, I'll, I will come back to that. So convert to brushes, flatten, repaint with the suit. And then we will add a point and just bring it in roughly. We'll do it quite sharp and see if that helps. Yeah, that's okay. So we'll again, we'll just get rid of those little dots so that we don't. So they're still there, but we just can't see them. So if we ever need to readjust the pivots, we can go back and t change the color of the pivot, and uh, change the color of the dot, and then re-pivot it if we need it to be done again. Okay, so now we have our guy pretty much rigged up. Our little kind of version of Samuel L. Jackson or something is pretty much there. So the shoulders, because 
they're behind the body, and if I just pull it out, for example, you won't really need it. And as he's wearing a suit, if you did have a three-quarter view, the this could be in front of the body, and actually it would look like the kind of stitching on a suit arm. So I don't actually think you need to do it on this one. Some characters I've done before, they have a fully um, flowing uh, body where the colour bleeds into the arm and stuff. In that environment, you, you need to auto patch it uh, or find or patch it somehow, um, and you would, you know, that's slightly different. But with this one, um, I don't actually need to do that uh, because the, it's hidden behind the the um, body at the top there. So I hope that makes sense. But I think pretty much our guy is ready to go. I'm going to save so we don't get any more crashes. It's still saying no one watching, which is just bizarre. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong screen or something. But there we go. Uh, so let's do a little a little test. This is kind of work out. Just to see what we can, just checking everything is kind of working, everything that we might need to do. Yeah, I think well, it's not bad really. The other body, we can move it down here to cover up the legs a bit. Move that leg up a bit, so a bit more. Yeah. Okay. So let's just go back to the where we were. So what I will do is, in between this video and next week's animation video, I will make sure that the cutter is working on the whole face, so that we can cut the whole face and move, and hopefully do some little head turns and that kind of thing. Um, and I'll just go through the rig a few more times to make sure it's working. Um, but I think we are pretty much there for today. So I really hope that's been helpful. If you have any further questions, please do let me know now before we say goodbye, and I will do my best to answer them before we go. Um, but if not, we will call it a day today. So thank you for watching. I've really, really enjoyed this first live stream for two years. Thank you for coming and being with me. Um, I'm hoping to do another video, like I said, the same time next week. Um, where I'll be animating this guy, so please do join me. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm on Twitter, uh, Mr. John Taylor, or on Facebook, I'm Mr. John Taylor dot animator. So you can follow me on Facebook as well. Um, please do give the video a like if you haven't already. And uh, I will be back next week with another video. So any final questions before I go for now? And then I'll work out some way of making the rig available for you. What I might do is add it to Google and I'll put a link in the description of the video once it's done, but I'll, I'll, on Twitter I'll mention um, when it's up and available so you can go and check it out. I'm just uh, checking out your, your questions and stuff before I say goodbye. Nothing particularly? Okay, so yeah, well thanks for watching and I will be back next week with another stream. See you soon! <laughs>